dangerous thin ice. How do I get to the other side with that really thin ice? Now have a look at this. Along the shore, it's really thin. <laughs> I have no idea if I can actually make it to the other side. Um, so, yeah, one of two things will happen. I'll make it or I'll fall through. In any case, uh, there are ways to cross thin ice. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and gather some materials right now. And uh, once I've got the materials gathered, I'll set them all here and I'll explain my plan of action. Step one, prepare for your rescue. I'm going to build a fire <clears throat> right here, right away, and have it going right on the edge. Uh, I don't need a blazing fire, I just need a fire going so in a case I fall through, I don't have to come and start it. Step two, take a bundle of ready-made fire materials, fine matchstick sized branches and birch bark in a bundle across the water and the ice so that when I get to the other side if I fall through when I reach the other side I can quickly light a fire. Step three carry with me long poles. You are a wise person to cross suspicious ice with at least one long pole, maybe two. With the pole, first of all, uh, as you'll see, I'll use it to distribute my weight over a large surface area in hopes of crossing thin ice. Second of all, if I do plunge through, the problem with falling through ice is that you can't grab anything and pull yourself out of the water. You're so cold, so shocked, it's very difficult to get the strength in your body and anything to grab to to pull yourself out. With a long pole, you suddenly have something you can pull out of, almost like pulling yourself out of a swimming pool, right along the edge, right? So I'm going to use two long poles. I'm going to attach my backpack and my tinder bundle or my fire lighting materials for the other side to the pole. So as I drag it across, should I fall through and I get to the other side, my backpack will be dragging along the ice tied to that pole and hopefully not in the water with me. And I'll have another warm jacket and uh, my pot and my backpack and the stuff that's in there. And I'm going to squish all of this right inside there like that. This is going to be my other side save your tinder bundle with uh, kindling, ready-made kindling. And I'll grab a few more. Old man's beard. We have a lot of this up here. And we'll just keep adding more and more. And I'll tie this bundle up. So when I get to the other side, I don't have to race around trying to start a fire. All right, so here goes. Got a fire in case I fall through and have to come back. Got my backpack, dry jacket, my gear, and another tinder bundle and kindling tied to that stick over there. And I've got my two crossing poles. 
<laughs> I guess we're going to see if I'm going to make it. Uh, just a word about my clothing. I'm wearing wool clothes, pretty much top to bottom, except for my uh, boxer shorts. Other than that, I'm in wool clothes, and that will hopefully come into play should I fall through. It's cracking all the way. There's about one inch of ice out here. I'm actually surprising myself <laughs> that I'm making it. Oh, I wish you could hear the sounds of the ice and see all the cracks. What do you think? For a little bit of drama, should we go <laughs> through the ice? Okay, I'm hitting bottom. Okay. Okay. Oh, got 
to get the wet off. Get my skin touching the dry. Fingers are cold. Everything. Boots. It's coming off. I don't want to sit in all this wet clothes. Wring it out. Get all the moisture out of it as much as I can and just warm up my bare skin. It's going to take way too long to get the heat of the fire through my clothes to me. So I'm going to just go right to bare skin. So yeah, I'm wearing Green Lantern underwear. You know us survival guys and girls. We're actually superheroes, you know. And yes, my toenails are painted because I have three daughters. They corner me and paint my toenails. That's pretty cold on the feet, of course. So what I'm gonna do is just, uh, I'm gonna go right back to wearing clothes. Uh, Cause it's, you know, it's below freezing outside. Uh, because wool is so nicely warm when it's, when it's wet. I'm just gonna squeeze all the moisture out that I can. Oh, so that's what burning chest hair smells like. <laughs> that wool is warm oh, when it's wet. Let me go. So with the wool clothing, the beauty is I'll put it back on uh, damp. And even though I'm damp and a little uncomfortable, I'll still be warm, especially with most of the water squeezed out of it. And working on uh, being active in wool clothing, uh, it takes a long time to dry, yes, but you're warm. And the wool has a beautiful property of kind of capturing that heat even when it's wet. So, not so worried about that. I'm going to go ahead and throw it all on. And of course we have merino wool nowadays. So these pads that I'm squeezing out right now, you may have noticed earlier, <laughs> they're uh, suit pants. Suit pants, 100% wool, something that you would buy, uh, you know, at Tip Top Tailors as part of your suit, and uh, <laughs> or dress pants, I guess. And uh, yeah, I paid five bucks for them at uh, thrift store. I bought four or five pairs of them. So why would I wear suit pants out in the bush? Well. Uh, right now the temperatures are around freezing and my full full on wool pants are just too darn warm. As soon as you start walking in those those big big wool pants, you know the thicker ones, you start sweating up. And so uh, my uh, friend and other and fellow instructor Kelly Harlton and I were kind of talking about it and thinking, well, dress pants are wool pants. They're very thin. You can wear them in summer, no problem. Why not wear wool dress pants in the bush? They're 100% wool. They have all the properties of wool, and they're just thinner. They, uh, you know, they they uh, really resist burning. They resist uh, flaring up. You can get sparks on them with no worry. And you can go to any thrift stop or thrift store anywhere <laughs> and get them for next to nothing, and be fashionable in the forest. You know, like. What the heck? All right, so I'll get back into my wool clothing, and at this temperature, I'll just kind of carry on, and I'll slowly dry out through the day. It, it's uh, midday right now. It's and this is exceptionally warm for November uh, here in Alberta. Typically, our temperatures now uh, can be down to minus 20 Celsius, minus 30 Celsius. Okay, on occasion. Uh, sometimes we'll get weeks at a time in November where we get temperatures well below freezing. In Fahrenheit, we'd be looking at minus 20, even down to minus 30 or 40 Fahrenheit in November. It's not that now. Oftentimes there's a lot of snow. So uh, 
because my clothes are damp, if it was 20 below zero right now, the outside air temperature would begin to freeze my clothes. Somewhere in the middle of my clothing, from the outside edge of my clothing to my bare skin, the frost line would meet and it would freeze and warmth from my body would meet cold from the outside air and a frost line would form. But by working beside a fire through the day, I could choose to work on traps or other crafts. I would slowly push that frost line out through firm, closer to the outside as my clothes dry and the moisture is driven from my clothing. So we're fortunate now to have warm temperatures, season, unseasonably warm temperatures and uh, lots of thin ice. <laughs> Awesome. Okay, well you don't need to see me get dressed anymore, so uh, it was bad enough I already showed you my underwear. So I'm going to uh, go ahead and shut the video off. And uh, there you go. Take a pole when you go to cross, when you go to cross uh, suspicious ice. If there's any doubt whatsoever, take a pole with you. Had that been a river with current underneath the ice, I could have easily been swept under the ice. Again, another reason for a long pole. Could you take longer poles than I have? Absolutely. If it was a big long river and you had to cross, or, or a section of lake, okay, and you maybe you had to go for a few hundred yards, maybe you have to go half a kilometer. It depends on your circumstance. Take longer poles, right? Take longer poles. Have fires ready. Have the means to start a fire on the other side ready to go. So you got to think ahead. You don't want to get, it's, it's too late once you fall through the ice to start thinking, you know what, I should have had a fire going. All right, thanks for watching. <laughs> like my sexy dress pants? Woohoo!